Chapter 12 Deploying the Chip Score Congratulations! You have earned it! By making it this far into this book, you are ready to learn the secrets of my new chip score system. It is a simple and clear way to assess and quantify the risk and volatility in your portfolio and to determine whether you can reap the returns you need to keep pace with the rising prices in your life. The chip score can help you quantify your portfolio's range of outcomes, and it can estimate the chances your portfolio will produce a net loss in any given year. It even can tell you how much money you have at risk if everything goes wrong, and it can convert that vulnerability into actual dollars that could disappear. Most important of all, the chip score lets you evaluate the performance of your financial advisor and whether he or she is making you richer while preserving your assets or unwittingly placing overly risky bets that could cost you dearly. No other portfolio ranking or rating system can do these things. My new system marks the first time that investors can come up with a customized rating for how well their portfolios are serving their individual needs. It is the first method to let them take into account how much their individual cost of living is rising as a drag on their returns. And it is the first scoring system to let investors rate the performance of their advisors. Brokers are going to hate that. That is powerful stuff, and you cannot find this clarity anywhere else in the investing business. Nobody else on Wall Street, nor anywhere in Washington, has developed anything that comes close to it. I know this because I scoured the financial world for a scoring system like this one, consulting with some of the smartest minds and more than a dozen of the most powerful Goliaths on Wall Street. I interviewed brilliant professors and economists and contacted regulators at the SEC and FINRA. Every time, I came up empty. This lapse is a sad and even scandalous situation, and it is by design. Financial advisors want to avoid offering you a hard and fast measure that points up their own failings. For years, it has made me cringe that so many of my peers in wealth management have been giving out unwise, reckless advice and selling model portfolios that hold far more risk of losses than they and their clients realize. All these financial advisors were constantly talking to their clients about things that were irrelevant their clients having no idea how poorly trained the advisors really were. So, I felt forced to create the chip score because the industry clearly was refusing to do it. The chip score can help investors vet their advisors and expose their incompetence and call them out on it. In this chapter, my aim is to equip you with the knowledge and understanding to deploy this new scoring system. Some of this will get a bit complicated— but we are talking about how you can best protect your wealth and support yourself for the rest of your life, maybe even leave something behind to help take care of those you love after you are gone. Learn it here, and it can pay off for you for years to come. Decades ago, people believed in their doctors blindly and rarely second-guessed their diagnoses and recommended remedies. Nowadays, we have learned that the patient must get much more deeply involved in treatment decisions, doing his own research and making the final call. Today, most people approach their financial advisors with the same blind faith and unquestioning acceptance that they had afforded to their physicians so long ago. Yet their financial advisors have far less training. This is a bad idea, given the mediocre quality of training, experience, creativity, and self-awareness in the overabundant ranks of brokers, advisors, wealth managers, insurance agents, business managers, investment advisors, and whatever other shingle any Tom, Dick, or Harry wants to hang up under the guise of managing other people's money. I want clients to revolt against incompetence and neglect in my industry. If their advisors don't know what they are doing and won't take time to learn the business— I don't want them in my industry. The chip score will empower you to evaluate how well or how badly your portfolio is performing based on your personal set of investment goals, and as important, how well your advisor is performing for you. 
That startling insight might make many investors want to find a new wealth manager. That, admittedly, is an extra reason why I offer the chip score. It is good for my business. The other guys are clueless, and I can save you from them. By now, you should have a better understanding of the important elements of investing that Wall Street fails to comprehend. My hope is that you know more about how to spot risk, reduce it, and narrow the array of possible investment outcomes. See Chapter 3. You even know about standard deviation, and that a narrower range is less risky than a wider one, and how your portfolio should have a standard deviation that is only 80% of your rate of return or less. See Chapter 4. You are also newly aware that your personal COLA rate is two or three times the rate claimed by the Consumer Price Index. See Chapter 5. Also, you know why, because Washington tinkered with CPI to tamp down the COLA increases paid to more than 60 million people on Social Security. See Chapter 6. By now, you recognize the importance of adding non-correlated assets that can offset declines elsewhere in your portfolio. See Chapter 7. Given your new awareness of these things, everything you see in investing will look different when viewed through this new lens— The CHIP score will help you get further down your path to financial security and successful investing. It is the product of 30 years of investing experience and listening to what clients want, their priorities and fears, through booming bull markets and jarring downturns and frightening, catastrophic crashes. This spans five boom-and-bust business cycles in all. The CHIP score can reveal a better way to invest— better at building the pillars that support a strong portfolio, smart risk assessment and reduction, keen awareness of real inflation and how to offset the damage it does, and sound construction and design. The wealth advisors in my business know almost nothing on these fronts, and they are unaware of their blind spot. In pondering this scoring system, and devising and developing it, and finally fine-tuning it and deploying it, I have created what may be the only approach that is personally tailored to take into account the individual client's COLA needs and the price increases of his lifestyle, as well as his income and tax burden, to figure out the necessary rate of return and how much risk he must take on to attain it. Now, here is your opportunity to reap the benefits. The CHIP score will empower you to take a do-it-yourself approach to portfolio construction so you can fix your retirement account and build it in a way that can make it all but impervious to the next market route. Yes, your assets might go down in value when the next crisis descends, but you will take comfort in enduring less of a decline than the broad markets overall because you will have diversified your assets, added contrarian investments, and insulated your account to reduce the downside possibilities. The way I have designed the chip score, the two most important factors it reflects are your personal inflation rate and volatility, meaning the real increase in the cost of living your life at the standard you now maintain, and volatility meaning how wide is the range of possible things that can go right and things that could go wrong, and how much money could you lose if things got really hairy. Overall, 60% of the chip score is based on the volatility in a portfolio, and 40% of the score is derived from the purchasing power that has been preserved in the account. Best bet overall. Aim for a return of 10% a year with a standard deviation of 8. This would be enough in gains to cover your real COLA of, say, 7% a year and still come out ahead with relatively low downside risk. If you can attain average annual returns of 10%, you can double your assets in roughly seven years. You should limit the chances that your portfolio could lose money in any given year to 15%, which you can do by reducing the standard deviation of your account overall by subbing out riskier investments and adding lower STD assets. Moreover, you should restrict your maximum downside loss to just 6% of total assets in a year by having an account with a standard deviation of 8 as it returns an average of 10% per year. Lastly, once you retire, keep your annual spending at 4% or less 
of the total value of your retirement account. In investing, restraining your spending on the front end can boost the impact of your gains on the back end. No fancy risks required. Just as when a business cuts operating expenses, the savings flow instantly to the bottom line as dollar-for-dollar profits. Or when you are working out to lose weight. Six-pack abs are made more in the kitchen by reducing intake than in the gym. Recall that a portfolio with a 10% average annual return and an STD of 8 means that 95% of the time in the past 10 years and for two standard deviations, your portfolio returned an average of 10% a year and as much as 26% or as low as down 6% in any year. Given the broad stock market's long-term returns of 7.5% with a standard deviation of 16 too high an STD for your portfolio overall, you will want to offset your seesawing stocks with non-stock investment vehicles that are less volatile and which boast a lower standard deviation. Beneath the surface of the chip score is a wealth of number-crunching algorithms assessing the risk and contents of each portfolio. All of this complexity is aimed at simplicity. The resulting score will fall in a range of 0 to 100. If your portfolio has a score of 75 or higher, it is in great shape. A chip score of 50 should have you concerned about some elements of risk and the potential for loss. And if your portfolio rates at a 30 or lower, you are in deep trouble, and it is time for an intervention. It means your portfolio has too much risk and volatility, too little diversification of assets, and returns that are falling short of your personal inflation rate. You can use the chip score to help your portfolio attain a better number. The process starts with your scoring your portfolio and where it stands currently. Thereafter, you can design your portfolio to hold a diversified mix of assets, non-correlating and otherwise, with varying levels of return and standard deviations and cascading maturity dates, and then figure out your new chip score and how much it has improved. You can calculate all of this rather simply, and it starts by your filling in the answers to five main questions and eight major metrics, ranging from your assumed personal inflation rate to your tax rate, real rate of return, and standard deviation. Go to my website at www.thechipscore.com, and you can even calculate your chip score on the fly and rejigger the various inputs to see how a few changes here or there can help you improve your account's score. This clarity and simplicity are in stark contrast to the usual approach taken by wealth managers at the biggest Wall Street firms. If you have an investment advisor, wealth manager, or financial planner, you may have seen these spiffy reports that the big firms put together. They have fancy, colorful graphics and charts. They talk about the overall direction of the economy and how each sector has performed and is expected to perform, and the real point is to show how smart they are supposed to be. If you have been with your advisor for many years, you will get an update on where your assets are, but not what your portfolio looks like in terms of risk or whether your real rate of return can keep up with your personal COLA. That report, which you are paying for, is of absolutely no benefit to you other than making it seem as though your advisor has a comprehensive investment plan for you. The advisors ask questions about how much insurance you have, how many kids you have, what year you want to retire. They may talk about insulating you from taxes and how to handle inheritances for your kids. From those answers, they will come up with some targeted rate of return necessary to achieve your goals and dictate a formula for your asset allocation, which, happily for their employers, will include mutual funds, ETFs, and bonds that their firms sell. Once you approve this seemingly solid plan, the advisor gets to work, constructing a portfolio he has no idea how to construct, laying off his risk, but not yours, to outside managers, and collecting fees in the meantime. Along the way, your advisor never offers you a way to grade his or her performance, in part because the big Wall Street firms they represent 
have avoided coming up with a clear and simple way to measure their performance for their clients. They want to avoid such scrutiny. There is a better way to do all of this, and it starts by knowing where your portfolio stands in terms of risk, returns, non-correlation, and other factors. By deploying the CHIP score to vet the risk levels in your portfolio, you will know whether your assets are safe and whether they need more protection. Knowing this for certain, you can avoid reacting fearfully when markets suddenly plummet and panic overtakes opportunity. So your benefits are doubled, your assets are insulated from the worst downside, and this insulation lets you avoid responding emotionally and taking actions you might regret later. Patience is a virtue, as the old saying goes. That one dates to the 14th century and English poet William Langland Wikipedia says, and this especially is true in investing. Before you can learn how to figure out your chip score and apply it to fixing your portfolio, you must learn a few things about the inputs that constitute this magical metric. Tallying up your portfolio's chip score begins with five key questions. One, what is the total value of your portfolio? Two, what is the management fee as a percentage of the total portfolio? Three, what is the investment fee as a percentage of the total portfolio? Four, what is your income tax bracket? Five, what is your estimated annual cost of living increase? By deducting from the first number the next four numbers, you get your real rate of return, see Chapter 10 the first of eight key metrics that you must record as part of the process of building your chip score. The others include standard deviation, the span of risk versus returns. The lower the number, the better. It should be at 80% or less of your average annual rate of return. Variance drag phantom tax. This is the ratio of your standard deviation in proportion to your rate of return. You arrive at this number by dividing your portfolio's overall standard deviation by its average annual return. Ideally, the VDPT should be less than your rate of return, and any drag phantom tax that is 150% of your return rate or higher, for example, anything over a 1.5, is way too much risk. Sharp Ratio. See Chapter 11. This measures risk-adjusted rate of return by subtracting the rate on a safe treasury from your total rate of return to calculate how much extra profit you reaped on the extra risk. You then divide this adjusted return number by your account's standard deviation to get the sharp ratio. It should be one or higher for your entire portfolio. Anything 0.5 or lower is unacceptable. Loss Probability this should be 15% or less, meaning a 15% chance that your portfolio will experience any loss in the next 12 months. The chip score calculator figures this out for you by running your list of assets through a Monte Carlo simulation, which crunches thousands upon thousands of investment return scenarios to come up with the odds of incurring a loss. Money at risk. How much money you could lose in a year in dollar terms based on historical data for the previous 10-year period. Upper and lower return. The highest returns your portfolio could produce in a year compared with the worst returns possible for any given year, based on the previous 10-year period. You want this range of returns to be narrower rather than wider. Correlation to S&P 500. How closely a particular asset or sector in your portfolio mimics the movements of the broad, large-cap stock index. On a scale of least similar, minus 1.0, to dead-on lockstep similarity, plus 1.0. If you have attended a lot of weddings, you may have come across someone reading the biblical passage from Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, which concludes, So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three but the greatest of these is love. The chip score is less poetic. Just know that of the eight measures listed above, the greatest of these is the variance drag phantom tax. 
It sounds like a fee levied on a superhero in New York City's Village Halloween Parade. And I say this as the guy who made up the phrase. Yet as a pivotal component of the chip score, it is well named. Variance, for the wide variation in results, otherwise known as volatility. Drag, for the restraint on your returns, which volatility can cause. Phantom tax, for the invisible, pernicious de facto tax on your returns posed by risk and volatility and the propensity to react to it, often wrongly. Plus, various drag phantom tax sounds kind of cool. In essence, the VDPT quantifies how much risk and volatility you are assuming to get the best possible returns while losing the least on the downside. It should be restricted to a lower number than the rate of return in your account. By now, I have told you that your standard deviation should be no higher than 80% of your account's average annual returns, so that a 10% return should equate to a standard deviation no higher than 8. Similarly, the variance drag phantom tax should be at 0.8 times the account's rate of return or lower. Those eight factors in hand. Let us turn to the asset allocation in your portfolio and the makeup, mix, and extent of diversification. As you will see on the chipscore.com, you are asked to fill in what percentage of your portfolio's value is invested in which of ten different kinds of asset classes. These include money market funds, tax-free cash and taxable cash, fixed income, seven kinds of bonds, including government and high yield, Hard assets, commodities, gold index, timber. U.S. stock funds, 23 entries from emerging markets to large cap. International equities, four kinds. Utilities, 10 major companies. Senior notes, nine choices. Business development companies, five fund picks. Alternative investment strategies, 10 options, including managed futures, Chapwood managed accounts, 26 different fund choices. You are asked to enter a percentage of total assets for any of the assets on our list, and while this painstaking process could take you an hour or more, you will have to do this only once for the rest of your investing career. Thereafter, it will take you only a few minutes to make a few changes here and there when needed. So, just do it, right? Now, let us review a few sample portfolios, find their chip scores, and compare and contrast them through this new lens. Sometimes, seemingly similar portfolios with a similar rate of return can have startlingly different levels of risk and standard deviations. First Sample Portfolio Five Questions 1. What is the total value of your portfolio and its average annual return? $3 million, 10% per year. 2. What is the management fee as a percentage of the total portfolio? 1%. 3. What is the investment fee as percentage of the total portfolio? 1%. 4. What is your income tax bracket? 32%. 5. What is the estimated annual increase in your cost of living increase? 6%. Start with a 10% gross return. Less 2 percentage points in fees and 6 points in personal inflation, and already this portfolio's real rate of return is down to 2%. It is rather sobering, right? We aren't earning nearly as much on our investments as we believe, to calculate the first sample portfolio's chip score, starting with a gross rate of return on a total fund of $3 million, I like to be optimistic, we add in the other metrics. First sample portfolio chart can be found in the bonus PDF. Plug these numbers into the online calculator at www.thechipscore.com and you can get your portfolio's chip score, 55. That is a pretty good score. The maximum downside loss of 9.41% in a year is survivable. 
The drag phantom tax of 1.01 is containable, 0.8 would be ideal. This portfolio's 16% chance of any loss in the next 12 months is acceptable. Now let us look at a second example. Second sample portfolio chart can be found in the bonus PDF. This is a flawed portfolio. The probability of a loss in any given year is a startling 24.35%, which is almost 1 in 4, and the maximum downside loss in any given year is almost twice the annual rate of return. The phantom drag is soaring at 1.44, 80% higher than it should be. Plus, the STD is significantly higher, at 140% of the rate of return. Armed with my chip score system, investors will have a straightforward method for assessing their portfolio's performance on an array of fronts. This can help them have a pointed discussion with their investment advisors regarding whether their investments are holding their own against inflation and the rising costs in their own lives. It is an outrage that the biggest names on Wall Street do such a bad job training their advisors to manage the wealth of their clients in safer, smarter ways. If these people are unable to do the job well and unwilling to get better at it, their clients should know enough to fire them. The chip score will inform them. As advisors, we are obligated to make our clients' lives more secure financially, and this can free them from worry and let them live happier lives, generally. I take pride in my role in helping people secure a sustainable future for themselves and their families. Every time I help another client shore up his portfolio and reduce unseen levels of risk, I feel good about it, and I think of my mom, Lois Tublin butowski and how determined she was in the last year of her life taking a job to keep pace with the rising costs eating away at her savings. It was a long time ago, and she passed away before I could help her. In her memory, I am fortunate to be able to help others, and I am hopeful my chip score can help you too. Risk and reward is a far better way to go than risk, reward, and ruin. The chip score can empower you to rate your advisor's performance and take control of your investing. It all is up to you. You must protect yourself.